Hello, everyone. Uh, today we have a returning guest, Dr. Thomas Nolan, um, with the more on vibrations. Um, he's going to take it easy on us. He's, he's uh, got it in a format that hopefully we can understand step by step and we'll take it from there. Um, Dr. Nolan. Hello, everyone. <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about understanding. And I find that the more I try to understand something, the more difficulty I have. So what I try to do is to go to a place where I have an understanding that's based on the ages. So as an overview, you might say that we okay think about when you were when you were conceived there was a sperm and an egg mm -hmm. the sperm contains information from the father donor that goes back right yeah the egg contains information from the mother donor that goes back. Mm -hmm. Together, there's information that's joining that creates a new life. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is to look at vibrations as a way of getting to that point where it might make sense. Okay. Let's see what happens with that. So, so first of all, I want to do a meditation. Okay. Uh, um, and I do this because, again, I want to operate from my true self as opposed to my program self. Okay. My program self for you two occurred as we choose to come here. We forget a lot of what we know. How old are you? Both of you? Uh, 31, I think. <laughs> Okay. Almost 50. Huh? Almost 50. Okay. So, oh God. So for you at 31, you're part of my special group. Hey. Wait, wait, wait now. When I read for people, and what's really nice is most are white, so I'm, I'm happy to see your brother here that has this. But, but it's like, so I get people who are from uh, of 4 to 20, 20 to 30. 30 to 40. And these are the rainbow, crystal, whatever you want to call them, children, that's come in with special knowledge. Mm -hmm. So when I came in, I forgot about most of what I knew because I wanted to get an understanding of what makes this world run. Mm -hmm. So you didn't forget everything. However, you did forget stuff, but then you got programmed. We just talked about you got programmed by your parents by the church, by school, and all and the, the, the community around you, the yeah. media and community around you. And out of that, you developed your own program mm -hmm. that's run independently. Okay. The problem is most of that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's skewed. It's changed. And I won't go into all of that just to say that it's not most of it is not true. Right. Well, but the most important thing is for you to know something or understand something, you have to go outside yourself to validate who you are. So when I worked as a chemist back in the 60s and uh, that led to three patents, it wasn't validated unless other folks, at least three other people, ran my experiment. Right. And got the same results. Right. For validation. So, and if you notice, most people out here as a, with this virus and stuff, they're constantly going outside themselves trying to find answers. Mm -hmm. So what I've found is, over the years, 
that early things I did as a chemist and engineer and all these things and experiences led me to a point to where I realized that did not work for me anymore. So I spent five years remaking myself and learning what I ultimately found out, how to access my true self. Right. And as I was able to access my true self, I had an understanding of things that was beyond. Mm -hmm. An experiment I run with people is, I have them in their program self to identify five people around the room. And as they, I think we did with this before, and as they focus on, on person number one, they couldn't focus on person number two. Yeah. When they were first focus on person number th four, they couldn't focus on person number three. But when I took them to their true self, they were able to focus on all five at the same time. Yeah. So part of the difficulty with the program itself is you can only deal with one thing at a time. Right. Right. But in your true, true self, everything is available. Mm -hmm. Which means you can get relationships. You can get a better understanding of things without having to go beyond that. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, so let's do the meditation. Okay. So close your eyes. And get an image of an animal that you love or your mother, or someone that you know you love. And then feel the love you have for them, the love they have for you, and that will automatically take you to your heart. Is that correct? Yes. With that feeling in your heart, let it spread throughout your body, from your head to your feet, out to your fingertips, one foot in all directions all around your body and let it take you to a deep level of peace. Bring it back to your heart and then expand that feeling three feet in all directions all around your body and fill this space with your energy. It anchors yourself to this space. And notice how you feel. So instead of trying to figure out what's happening, feel, breathing gently and deeply, feel. Go into your body and feel the energy around your back, your shoulders, your chest, and again, let it go to your heart. Notice here, there's no stress, there's no fear. Furthermore, go to the last time you really got upset, I mean really upset, and relive that experience and feel that experience, the anger or whatever it was, as strongly as you can. And at the height of that emotion, go back to a place of peace, the place of anchor you just went to. And as you go back to that place of peace, that anchoring place, what happens to the emotions? They're, they're like neutralized. It's like you're watching that moment in time, but it doesn't uh, evoke the same feeling. What happens to the emotions? Nothing there is uh, dissolved, they go away. Let it go away completely. And as it goes away completely, now go back and relive this experience, and this time, do what's best for yourself. So I'm showing you a way of anchoring yourself, but also showing you that what you're feeling is not emotions. You can open your eyes. What you're feeling is not emotions. What you're feeling is love. 
-hmm. And it's that state of being that I call the true self. This is far as I'm going to go with that right now. That's it's a whole lot of other things I can do with that, but that's the basic thing. Okay. So anyway, on your computer, look up the electromagnetic spectrum. I'm still working with this and how to put this on line. And I'm, I'm learning how to deal with all this. Okay. But when you see the electromagnetic spectrum, mm -hmm. well, first of all, go to Google. Notice that as you top, go to Google, the little lines that go up and down, put in electromagnetic magnetic spectrum. Right. Frequency. At the gamma ray, which is almost, is after you get photons or somewhere in there, I'm still working on that part. Um, how fast it's vibrating, all the way down to radio waves where it's almost linear. Okay. But it goes through X-ray where you see the atoms, the ultraviolet light, the visible infrared, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I look at this whole spectrum as being light. Right. I look at that whole spectrum as being light. So when people look at the light around them, and they, I said, that's not light. That's visible light, which is only maybe one half uh, to one percent of the whole spectrum. It's less right. than that. Mm -hmm. All the rest of it is in darkness. Mm -hmm. Well, people have heard about ultraviolet light. They've heard about infrared light and all like this. And, and if you would take a picture of the sun, and you would see, and actually, if you go to the NASA sun. website mm -hmm. and look like at it, get different, different images information of the sun that. under different lights. Okay, so what this is also saying is from that electromagnetic spectrum, everything is moving. Everything is vibrating. Right. Okay. So you walk into a room and you say, what happened here? You've had that experience? Yes. You feel in the vibration of what went in that room. Mm -hmm. Which lets you know that something's happening. So I want to go through some definitions now okay. that might help us to deal with that. So vibrations is a mechanical phenomena whereby oscillations occur on an equilibrium uh, point. It's like it's movement. When, but I want to focus on a particular thing. When light moves, there are photons. Mm -hmm. It's because photons are given off. Okay. Photons are constantly moving. Space is not empty. It's full of all kind of uh, 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 particles and stuff that's going on. Right. So photon is a particle of light defined as a discrete bundle of electromagnetic energy. They are always in motion. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to skip over a lot of stuff, but I'll just introduce this. I looked up the Big Bang. Okay. That was an experience. Yeah. You need to look it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not just one big explosion. Mm -hmm. It is. But it happens over millions of years. Mm -hmm. That's like somehow, according to NASA, that's somehow 40, 400 million years before light shows up. Right. 400 million years? Yes. Yeah. So that, okay. So it happens over time, but it's a long time in between. What we call time is not universal. It's not... Uh, uh, universal time is what right. it goes. 
But I want to skip to that. Now, what about back up? So when the Big Bang occurred, matter in the form of hydrogen, uh, helium, and some lithium was formed. Now, I do understand that after so many million years, maybe a billion, the stars start coming. Mm -hmm. So this mass of energy starts spreading out and it's like it bundles in groups and those form stars. Stars is a, is a process of fusion where hydrogen atoms come together and form heavier materials. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff we have on Earth that we know happened because a star exploded. Right. And it spread throughout the universe. Right. Now, I'm skipping. No. It's too much information. That's fine. <laughs> so I want to go to matter, both living and crystal and mineral. Okay. So in an environment where you have certain chemicals, and you might want to look this up too. In an environment where you have certain chemicals together, like nitrogen and oxygen and carbon, they form heavier, uh, uh, more complex molecules. And in that process, over millions of years, a cell was formed. Mm -hmm. So think about it. And the best way I can explain is like this. Matter can be thought of in terms of a gas, a liquid, and a solid. Right. And the reason that it has these forms is because of vibration and movement. Okay. okay. So take water, H2O. Mm -hmm. In the sky, we have hydrogen molecules. They're in constant movement at high speeds. Mm -hmm. Rain occurs because when there's a drop in temperature, a change in pressure, these water molecules slow down. Okay, and I gotta bring up one more thing here. Okay. So living matter is based on carbon. Yes. And it's based on covalent bonding. Mm -hmm. That's a shared electrons. Minerals are based on ionic bonding, mm -hmm. which means you have an atom, let's say, of uh, sodium, an atom of chlorine. They come together to form sodium chloride. Mm -hmm. But in the periodic chart, uh, let me come back to that. To that this, these, okay. It's interesting to me because I came up doing the change from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics. Okay. The periodic chart I, chart I saw in high school and college had eight columns. Yeah. What you see now is the long form. Right. Two columns, 10 in the middle, and then eight, and then six. Mm -hmm. So sodium is on one end, like the second or third row. Chlorine is on the opposite end, just before you get to the um, uh, inert gases. Around the nucleus, in the outer nucleus, sodium has one electron. It has eight inside on the next level. Around the nucleus, chlorine has seven electrons. Mm -hmm. They want to have both sodium and chlorine want to be complete. And to complete, they need to be, have the same number of electrons as they have uh, um, uh, um, protons. Okay. 
Now, so chlorine needs one to have a full shell of eight. Mm -hmm. The full outer shell of eight. Sodium has one more that it needs. So when sodium and chlorine get together, sodium will give off its electron to chlorine. Now chlorine has eight, sodium has, has uh, 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 none in the outer orbital, which means it has one more proton in the, than in, on, in the nucleus than the electrons on the outside, which means it has a charge of a plus one. Mm -hmm. Chlorine has one more electron than neutron, than a, a, a proton, which means there's a charge of a minus one, and they come together, and that's how minerals are formed. Mm -hmm. So that's ionic bonding. Okay. All right. Living matter is based on carbon uh, 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 compounds. Minerals are based on ionic compounds that are based on uh, the plus and negative charges. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Given that then, a rock matter is vibrating. Mm -hmm. If you go down to the end, on the outside, it looks stable. So if you are able to see one atom of anything, It's like in between, that's more than enough vacant space to drive a truck, so to speak. Right. More than that. Right. I'm just using this as, as, as an example. Mm -hmm. So an atom is not solid. So what we can say then is in place, it's vibrating. Now, this is the hard part to try to keep from getting too deep into this. Okay. When I studied quantum mechanics in, in the beginning, they began to, 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 to show these first two, which is like S, it's like a ball, and then the P's, which have six, and then the D's, which have 10, and the F's, which have 14. These are orbitals. So, but they have different shapes. Mm -hmm. These shapes are not solids, but probabilities of where you might find the, uh, the electron in any given time. Okay. So let's just say you have a P orbital, which is like a circle in the middle, and then a loop here and a loop here. Mm -hmm. A S orbital is like a, a ball. I won't even try to deal with a deal. <laughs> it's, too, it's too difficult for me at this point. But these are probabilities of finding an electron. Mm -hmm. So just take the, 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 even just the ball. It's a big ball like this with electrons. So think of a basketball, if I can just use that as an analogy. The basketball is just an example of where that one electron or two electrons that can be in that orbital can be in any given time. Mm -hmm. All the rest of that is empty space. But it's moving. Okay, so each one of these um, levels have movement. That's the vibration we're talking about. Okay. So, okay. Let's go back to the water molecule. Okay. So you have an individual H2O molecule moving through space at high speeds. As it slows down, even though they are two covalent hydrogen bonds with oxygen, shared bonds with oxygen, because you have a molecule like this and two ends like this with two hydrogens, Mm -hmm. In between, that forms a positive center 
on the other side of that ball here is like a negative symbol because it's two pairs of electrons. Okay. So what happens is you have then a hydrogen as it slows down, a hydrogen atom uh, uh, from one uh, H2O molecules that has a positive center is attracted to the negative center of that ball. Mm -hmm. So the ball is like this, with the ball here and two ends like this. At this point, at the apex, is where that negative center is. So one of these can connect electronically to here. So that forms two molecules, which means other molecules can join that too. Okay. Now, when enough molecules come together, it forms a change that changes from a gas to a liquid. Yeah. So that as the temperature goes down, because it as it slows down, like at 100 degrees, okay? So below 100 degrees, it begins to slow down. Yeah. Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit. Freezing is another process where it slows down again and it forms a lattice more of a solid. So you have a solid, which is molecules that are joined together in a lattice so firm, it becomes a solid, ice. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So from a gas to a liquid to a solid, they're all vibrating, but the vibration that and movement within that slows down. Right. And it slows down to the point to where you can have these three different states. Right. That's one. With living matter, you have cells. So let's go to reverse. So you have a cell that has a nucleus and an out of, out of, out of portion. So Let's say that that's a, that forms a molecule. Cells come together. Living cells come together and they become shared such that they form tissue. Right. Tissue goes to organs. Organs go to systems. And the collection of systems forms a body, a human body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that's constant movement. Now, here's where the difference occurs. If you take broccoli, and this is a uh, work that was uh, from a book shown, uh, um, written by Lynn McTaggart called The Feel. And some scientists found out that plants through photosynthesis changes light into um, and uses that with carbon dioxide to form more molecules that feed cells. Right. It's not quite right yet. I'm processing. So, when you eat a plant that has grown through photosynthesis, that's taken sunlight to grow the plant into the various parts. Mm -hmm. When you eat a plant 
and you digest it, it forms then, it breaks down into carbon dioxide and water. Water can be distributed and eliminated. Carbon dioxide can be converted. But what's also utilized is photonic energy. Photons from the light is absorbed. Mm -hmm. As those photons are absorbed throughout the body, if you've ever been to, uh, had surgery or some type of um, um, electronic process in the hospital and they gave you a shot or gave you some liquid, it flashed throughout your whole body. That's because the photons that are come from the plant are distributed throughout the body, throughout the cells, throughout the tissue, throughout the organs, throughout the system, throughout the body. Now, if you take one cell that's sick or diseased and put it into a nurturing environment, it will heal itself. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, as the cells come together and form tissue, and this is what happens with evolution, if you go through all that process, that that cell is like part of a community. Mm -hmm. And once that cell is a part of a community, it is no longer has its own focus. Right. It gets direction from the collection of cells. So each time you go from cell to tissue, to organs, to systems, to body, each one of those are steps of communities or clusters where each time you go to a higher form, I believe you have a higher consciousness. To me, that photon energy that's distributed throughout the body is my understanding of consciousness now. But as you go from that cell to tissue to organ, you go to a more complex structure. Right. Each one of those complex structures has a consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that consciousness controls that grouping. Where's the tissue, where's the, uh, uh, um, the organ, or where's the uh, uh, system and the body. Mm -hmm. So the cell is no longer independent, it's now part of a community of cells. Each one of those are vibrating. And the things that holds all together is that photonic energy that drives through all of that. Mm -hmm. So ask questions now, let's see what we can do with them. Hmm. I've got several, but I'm thinking like separate them out and make different, uh, you know, get together and have like different meetings over them. Because um, I want to go back, well, two, two things kind of stand out. Um, you spoke about, you know, you asked her age and, and you said that he's something specific that has come in, um, that has to seek information outside of itself. No, the program self. The, the program self is what, when we come to this earth, to this environment, and we are born, even in the womb, we're being programmed by our parents because we react to whatever's going on with the mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's outside of that, although I see in many cases the child is, is programming the parent instead of the parent programming the child, but it goes both ways. If you see kids running around here. So what I'm saying is the program itself has an understanding that's based on the parents that came from their parents that came from their parents. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. But isn't because you're the, same, the child? Isn't it the same though? I, I don't know if there was a, if I misunderstood. Um, you said there are a certain uh, age group. Um, oh no, I said that's different. Okay, that's different. Okay. All right. What I'm saying is. 
people I work with that I, there's three groups, we might say four, but four to 20, 20 to 30, and 30 to 40, and then over 40. These groups have what I would say special intelligence, special abilities. So let me try to give this, okay. Go back to when you were a child. If either you have imaginary play, uh, playmates. Mm, no, I didn't. Did you? Um, not, not that I recall, um, but you spent a lot of time Go ahead. by yourself. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was the only child, but I was always around my cousins. So that's why I didn't have that you know, that imaginary friend thing. Yeah. Did you know things? Mm, oh, that's a tough one. That seemingly other folks didn't know. See, I, I see it in him. I, I, like when he talks about himself and how he grew up and the time he spent alone, the conversations he had with himself, the conversation he had with where he had with his reflections, for example, it might not have been an imaginary friend, but he had scenarios where conversations were happening back and forth. Um, and, and I compare it to my childhood, me growing up, I feel he has come with a certain knowing that, I don't know, I was like running on autopilot, I just <laughs> going through the day, you know, until I grew up. Um, so I feel he's a different breed. Of, of humans. Let's just say that certain things we experience, we think everybody does it. Mm. Right. They don't. Mm -hmm. And they don't. Everybody that's in these, all people that's in these four to, to, to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, are not the same. Right. Another way of putting this, I don't try to judge people because I don't know why they're here. And I know no I don't know what lessons they learn. Mm -hmm. But I can tell when I see people that they are different. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. When I'm at an event and I'm doing readings with people, I immediately know the people I want to talk to. Mm -hmm because they're having a different experience and they're trying to deal with, so deal with a different, find a different way of living with life. So I would say this, the 20, the 30 to 40 group are like, I, I give the example of a four year old can interpret what a two year old says. Yes. Because they just left there. Mm -hmm. So I see this, 30 to 40 group as people who can help younger groups to understand what they're going through once they understand. Right. The 20 to 30 group, the best I can say is they're magical. The, the 4 to 20 group are just off the chart mm -hmm. about what they can create and what they can do. Mm. What happens though is unless you have a parent that recognizes that you need to be different. I have some friends who are like this, who raise their kids in a different environment that didn't let the school system mess with their kids. Right. And they taught them in such a way that they understood who they were and they allowed them to develop along those lines. Mm -hmm. So that's one extreme to the people where they're completely programmed. So I believe that these three, group, three, three groups are helping the planet to change. That we are on the verge 
of going to another level of consciousness. Okay. Um, let me switch back to just a little bit here. Each time a living species became more complex, it created a higher level of consciousness. Right. Within itself, within a body, those levels of cells, tissues, organs, uh, uh, systems, each one of those has a consciousness that's higher than the level below. Does that make sense? Yes. So, I believe that human beings have a chance to go to the next level of evolutionary level of development. I can't explain what that is. Mm. I don't even try. Mm. Mm. Anybody who tries to, forget about it. Mm. The reason is, if you go on YouTube and look up Flat World, I think we talked about this before. Yes, yes. yes. Two dimensions, so you can see down in that two dimension and see beings going around and around and doing their jobs and all the kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There are circles, there are squares, there are different geometric figures. Mm -hmm. One day, a circle, a little girl, is taken out of that two dimensions into three dimensions. And that circle becomes a sphere, a ball. She can now see her parents and all the people, and she calls out to them, but they can't hear her. And she sees now the oneness of three dimensions. When they put her back into two dimensions, how can she explain what she knows? Mm -hmm. So I don't try. Yeah. Because there's no way to explain that on that level. So I'm saying, I guess, fourth dimension or fifth dimension or whatever the heck it is. I won't even try to do that. But I do understand that there's another level of development that I want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So in the world, there are forces that are trying to keep things as they are. Because Civilized, civilized systems is a living entity too. Right. And it wants to keep its stability and maintain itself. Right. And it's going to resist change. Huh. I just saw where, and I don't know how true this is, there's a strain of the coronavirus that has mutated. Mm -hmm. What happens is, when a substance exists and it's attacked, it tries to protect itself. Mm -hmm. And it can create antibodies, what they're talking about, the antibody stuff. It can create a resistance to that. That resistance is learned. Mm -hmm. So one thing I haven't talked about is, I've talked about the external knowledge that we that we, we got trained by but each one of us has the knowledge let's say a human feel so if i go back to the uh, photonic energy so on a given level of tissues of organs those photons are flashed throughout that level it flashes, it's flashes, actually flashed throughout the whole system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's to maintain that, to grow, to develop, to survive. Every once in a while, there's a person that comes in a substance comes in that resists all that hmm. and is able to go to a, to a another beginning to another level of being. Hmm. 
when enough of those people or things come together, they form a new consciousness. That's what I'm talking about. That's like the hunter's monkey. Mm -hmm. Okay. They form a new consciousness. I believe that 4 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40 are part of a group of people that have come in to help foster this new consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because they can go beyond where the average person cannot go. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So well, since they can go beyond, go ahead. Um, so you're talking about these different age groups and how one helps the other usher, usher them in. Like they come in uh, waves. The top helps the one, it the, helps to train the one below and yeah. so on. Yes. It kind of like makes me think of the wording I've heard before, which is like the helpers, they came in waves. Yes, yes. The people who are now in their 50s and beyond were yes. maybe like what, one of the first waivers and then yes. the next and the next and the next. And yes. I was thinking, has this ha been happening throughout hu the human experience on the planet? And is there something else that's going on now? Because, for example, Nick and I were kind of talking about how you look back in history and it's almost like nothing really has changed. Um, that's not true. Except that's not true. maybe towards the last 100, 150 years, you can see like, okay, well, we're without electricity, now we are. We're without phones, now we are. No planes were in the sky, and now, now we do have. But it all happened, if you look at the span of the human lifetime on this planet, it's only in the last you know, a few seconds that all this stuff happened. What were we doing this whole time? That's an exponential curve. An exponential curve goes slowly rising. At a certain point, it takes off straight. So we're at that point of taking off straight. But for that long period of time, it looks like nothing is going on. Yeah. Now, but that's one. It seems to me, this is not the first time. Yes. It's happened many times. Mm. Look at Peru and the buildings. They're finding now in South America, many pyramids that had, the jungle had, uh, had overgrown all over South America mm -hmm. in the jungles. I mean, new ones that the people didn't know were there. Mm -hmm. Somebody built that. We can't do the same things with the same, look at how those stones are put together perfectly with stuff that we don't know how to do that. The pyramids of Egypt, all over the world, there are different structures like this, mm -hmm. okay? My guess is Mu that was in the Pacific, Atlantis that was in the Atlantic, were civilizations that reached a certain point and destroyed themselves. But, no, yeah, okay. At the same time, what happened to the Mayans in Central America? Mm. They left. My belief is a certain group of people went to their next level, but some were left behind. Mm. So just think if with this virus, if enough people die who understand how to deal with things. What are the other folks going to do? Mm -hmm. How are they going to maintain? How would they maintain New York City if they didn't understand how to do that? Right. So after a while, it would deteriorate into whatever. Yeah. Deer running in the streets and plants growing into the buildings. and But also people going crazy and... <laughs> Yes, all that stuff. Nature will take over anything if left alone. Yes. yes. So I don't think about saving the earth. No. The earth will take care of itself. You're trying to save. We're the ones that's going to be, be gone. So, but I look at three things, three, deal with this three, three ways. 
we'll go back. Nick, notice Nick has been here from day one. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Nick hadn't changed. No. But the body has changed. Yes. Ruby, same thing. Ruby and Nick don't die. Your consciousness doesn't die. Right. It goes on. Okay. So, in the change, it seems to me, there are folks who are left behind. There are folks who go on to the next level. And I guess some in between, I guess. Mm -hmm. To me, but there's one more thing we didn't talk about. The earth in its four billion year experience has had five up to 10, depending on who you talk to, major extinctions. The first was anaerobic bacteria, which means without oxygen. Mm -hmm. That anaerobic bacteria, bacteria covered the whole earth. In covering the whole earth, it gave off oxygen. They right. gave off oxygen as a waste product. It gave off so much oxygen, it changed the environment from an anaerobic to an aerobic environment. And now you only find those species, those bacteria, in certain areas of earth where there's little or no oxygen. So that was caused by themselves. Mm -hmm. The dinosaur supposed to be caused of um, explosion, I mean, the uh, asteroid. Mm -hmm. But also they talk about uh, um, volcanoes, mm -hmm. super volcanoes that can change the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had a case of uh, uh, almost another ice age uh, about 300, 200 years ago because of volcanoes that covered the whole sky, the whole earth. And so for one, that was a mini ice age of sorts. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, is that I believe this experiment has happened several times. But at some point, either because of their own negligence made them move, or because of technology, Atlantis, they're gone. Right. So I look at it this way. If we, we're on the verge of extinction or going to the next level. So that's the three. One, we could disappear completely as human beings on this planet. But our consciousness won't die. We'll pop up somewhere else on another planet or somewhere else and start all over, whatever, whatever happens then. Okay. There can be a case where we all go to the next level. Or part of it goes to the next level and part of it leaves, leaves behind, like the Mayans. Mm -hmm. And so I look at these three groups of people as uh, um, intelligence that came to this planet to help foster that, that ability. So I'm saying the human beings is an intelligence. Mm -hmm. But there's two intelligence. That's why I said the program self and the true self. We can talk about those photons spreading throughout the whole, the whole body and creating intelligence along the way that governs all these processes, that grows, that keeps it going, that maintains it. But they give off protons. So, a school of fish, a flock of birds, you've seen them fly and change directions and flow and all like this. Mm -hmm. That's because when they give off those photons, they create a field. So let me go back again. 
So you have the cell, the tissue, the organs, and that was what I was trying to get to a while ago, the organs, the systems, the body. Each one of those levels creates a field that those photons go out throughout that field to maintain that level of tissue, that maintains that level of organs and so on. Such that you have a feel with the human being, you have a feel with each level of that. Mm -hmm. Given all photons, so the two of you create a field that's based on your photonic connection. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it seems to me, and that's why I was asking about our mutant message down under, they were able to communicate telepathically. They were able to deal with healing, finding what they needed, and they felt like they were a part of the whole system. Most indigenous people are like this. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we say these people are stupid, they don't have any intelligence. And I don't even go into all that, but they have a different type of intelligence that to me is unknowing. But one of the things that the enemy message they talked about, they were leaving the planet. And they wanted somebody to help maintain what the knowledge that they had and to show what needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to keep from jumping all over the place. Okay, you're 31, you're in your 50s. Almost 50. 49, please. 49, okay, okay. Well, that's a different group. That's a different group. Good group. <laughs> But wait, wait, wait now. What's the earliest stereo that you remember? Me? Both of you. The earliest stereo. Uh, I actually still remember uh, eight track players. You remember eight track? Yeah, uh, my grandma had one, and so I, I know it was before my time, but that's the earliest thing I remember. Okay. Did you ever hear it? Oh, uh, yeah, I heard it, yeah. Okay. I go back to, I was joking with my family, we had a photograph, yeah. a, a record player when I was a kid, a photo record player that we could wind up. Wow. Photograph, right? Grandma phone. No, 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 it was after then. Okay. This is a little play. This is a little portable play thing that we had mm -hmm. that we could wind up and play records. I think it may have had power too, but yeah. Okay, but anyway, as a young man, um, in my twenties, my best friend, I had read. Okay, in college, in graduate school, uh, my roommate got a Radio Shack record player that he put together that he made that he built from radio shack mm. that he put together mm. i remember in uh college uh, one of my roommates had a record a portable record player that had this great sound mm -hmm. so when my roommate in graduate school bought his radio shack uh contraption that he put together, it had a nice sound. So when I went to work, I made good money, but I didn't have a lot of cash money. Mm -hmm. One of my best friends came from a more well-to-do family, so he had more available money. He was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I knew, I had read and up, and I knew about stereo equipment. So I helped him buy a stereo system. It was a dual turntable, a Fisher um, a, a tuner, a, a, a amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, you can be, best you can get them separate. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get a Macintosh, which was two that had a flat line. Mm -hmm. Solid state technology created a flat line, but it was, but I'm, I'm gonna let go of that. 
So anyway, so the Dells has a song called Love is Blue. When he played that record on that dual turntable with JBL speakers and that Fisher thing, that bass was like, I still feel that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've yet to be able to recreate that. Mm -hmm. I was told some time ago that the MP3 sound doesn't get all the music that comes from a photograph. The purist has the 33 and a third with those turntables I was talking about. That's the best sound I've heard. Mm -hmm. But each time it got more convenient, but you lost some of the music. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, most people wouldn't know that because they didn't hear it before. Mm -hmm. So how can people know about Bill Russell and uh, that group if they never saw him? You know, you might get the videos and stuff like this. and, right. and think, oh, yeah. But when you were around him that time, it's like, oh, Muhammad Ali, and they never saw him. But what happens is, over time, we get better technology, but we lose a bit. I mean, that's, that's the price we pay for it. Right. So what I'm saying is the civilized world, as it expands and gets things, something is lost. Mm -hmm. It's like the more we know, the more we don't know. Now, I will be lost without my phone now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I find myself looking up stuff everywhere I go. I can find almost anything I want on this darn thing. Right. My whole life is tied up into that. Mm -hmm. But I have to get my JBL headphones to get the great sound out of it. I pay a whole lot of money for that. <laughs> but the average thing you buy has a good sound, but if you didn't hear that, you didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So to put that together. Here we are. We're caught up in this world. We're trying to understand. We're trying to live. But I would ask the questions. Are we happy? I can tell you that before this virus and we had to stay in, in, inside. I traveled twice a month, going all over the Southwest on the weekends. If I was home more than two weekends in a row, wow, it wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. It wasn't cool. It's like when I, once I go on the road, I, I get a different consciousness. I'm able to be in my own and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But since I've been home, since the first, the, the second week in March, I've been okay. Mm -hmm. I've been at peace. And I look at all these people going crazy. Not all. Yeah. Going crazy. Yes. And it's like, they don't have their toys. They don't have their places. So, but did you hear in LA they can see the sky at night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the same in New York and around right where you are because pollution is less. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of benefits of this. I mean, I'm not some of the people dying and stuff like this, but I'm saying we're not utilizing a lot of a lot of resources that we need to do stuff. Right. So but back to the issue here. The three groups, to me, are about change. Four, if you want to do some four, this, mm -hmm. are about change. And that helping human consciousness to change. So again, if I go tissue, I mean, cell, tissue, organ, systems, humans, 
collection of humans, mm -hmm. clusters of humans. Mm -hmm. So if you look at right now with this virus, think of the many clusters of people that are not interacting with each other, but are fighting each other. It keeps people where they are. Mm -hmm. I'm not fighting. I'm working to help people connect because as these, as enough people connect on another, on that level of consciousness. So we have, again, the cell, the tissue, the organ, the, organ, the system, the bodies, groups of humans. and then the human consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that when enough people come together at that higher level of consciousness, a new consciousness will emerge. Dr. Nolan, um, I, I've loved this session. Um, it's a lot of important information and, and I can't wait to listen to it again and pick out um, things that I think I would love to um, come back and, and talk to you about and, and um, I, I will ask it now but of course um, you know we'll bring this to an end you mentioned that I mean I point at him but we've come in waves and we've come uh, different than waves of human beings before and we've come with a consciousness and we, we've come with a knowing we, we we come from a knowing, and, I, and my question would be, hopefully, maybe the next time that we speak, how do we bring in the knowledge that we came in with? If okay. he okay. is a, a certain you. kind of human being, a different breed of human being, all these different age groups, um, how, how can we best first of, of all recognize what we are and what our capabilities are, what's stopping us from bringing in what we came in with it's basically seeing ourselves for what we are and knowing what we truly are and how to bring that in and and perhaps if you can grace us um okay. maybe i would love to mm. i first want to be able to put on slides or graphs okay yeah. like and i'll send you some pictures but like the exponential curve Yes. That's very important. Okay. Because you have a, a line that goes so gradually, it looks flat. Yeah. So one of the exercises I, I, I did in the class for people to do was take a sheet of paper, fold it in half. And if you were able to fold that single sheet of paper, in half, one, two, three, four, five, 27 times. <laughs> How long would it be? Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. How long would it be? It would astonish you. Mm -hmm. It would astonish you. Okay. Okay. More than a mile. I put it, it would astonish you. So here we are with this line that goes flat. Even bamboo. You plant bamboo, a certain type of bamboo, and it looks like nothing's happened for a long time. Then it shoots up 10 feet. Mm -hmm. That's that exponential. Mm -hmm. So when it, when, it's, when it begins to go up exponentially, it's like it's happening so fast. So that's still that point in there. We're in that section. So for the last 3,000 years, maybe 10,000 years, mm -hmm. it's been a steady increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One last thing.
There's another thing that says, starting around the 20s and so forth. In the next 20 years, and I'm, I'm not quite right here, enough information that was in that period that was in the last 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it doubled ever since. That's why we start to see the changes. Look like nothing happened before. Not, no, no, that's not true. Yeah, yeah. It's been happening. Yes, it just we couldn't see it because of like we can see it functional. because we're flat. Yes. All right, all right. This this was uh, just another amazing uh, conversation. I think so. It's lovely. Lots of stuff to digest, take back, mm -hmm. re-listen to, mm -hmm. and uh, formulate uh, more questions. Um, okay. But to do that and have a, have a list of questions because what happens is, I mean, I had 27 slides. Right. No, no. But what happens is, as we start talking, other things come in. Okay. And I just found that if I give a structured talk, I follow the slides. Okay. But if I give a discussion talk, Spirit takes over. Okay. When spirit takes over. Yeah. You end the way you. Oh, I like that. I like when spirit takes over. Right. Um, then you get what you need to hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I feel that's what I got today. I, I yeah. got what I needed to hear, and and that there's more that I want now uh, from this. Dr. Thomas Nolan, thank you so much. Again, it was a great pleasure and we look forward to doing this again with you soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you much. very much. Thank okay. you.